What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome to Let's Play Soma Blind. This is a game that I've heard great things about and have been wanting to play for quite some time. I enjoy horror games, especially psychological thrillers, and heard that this is really great at doing that. And already you can get those eerie vibes from just looking at the title screen. And I actually don't know if I'm going to include it, but the loading screen before introducing frictional games, etc. Just the sound effects are so eerie and unsettling. So I'm definitely looking forward to this. I did a quick little trial to make sure this is running on my PS4 correctly. And yeah, I'm looking forward to getting into it. Let's take a look at the options real quick, just to be safe. I don't know. Subtitles are on. Good. And... I think... Is there a robot poster on the left? There is... Okay, so I, I can just barely make it out with this. Alright, so I think... With that, we should be good to go. They're not going to give us much about... Hints are on. I guess we'll stick with that for now. It seems like that's the default. So let's start a new game. Monsters are dangerous and can kill you. You need to think and sneak to survive. The way the game was designed from the start. Well, it's tough to argue with that, right? <laughs> so we'll start. Yeah, no, I don't... Like I said, this was a... Um, a little test file to make sure the game was running. I don't record on console very frequently. So... Wanted to make sure that went well. And why are there... Is that... Um, why are there brain scans in the lower right corner? It's kind of odd. But anyways, big thank you to Beth, and congratulations on your excellent performance in Hero vs. Zero Season 5. Uh, this is something you earned, and something I was looking forward to, so thank you for giving me the push I needed to play this game for the channel. What are all these sounds in the background? So unsettling. Also, very long loading screen. Reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. Are you okay, Simon? Huh, that's bleed? an interesting point. Oh, that, that's nothing. It's just my brain can't stop bleeding from the accident. What? Here, take this. No, that that's for later, for the scan. It's green. Ashley, I need to tell you something. Simon, please don't make this weird. No, no, it's not like that. Why now? Who's David Munch? Why is there never enough time? For what? What? Christ. Huh. So that was pretty interesting. The first thing we're gonna do is immediately interact with this. Was it R2? So we can get rid of that sound effect. Yeah, I'm up. Hi, Simon Jarrett? Yeah, that's me. My name is David Munchie. We spoke earlier. The brain scan. I remember. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, just a bad dream. Are, are we still on for today? Yeah, that's why I'm calling. I wanted to remind you to drink the tracer fluid I sent you. It'll help me capture a better image of the damages. Don't worry, I, I, I got it somewhere. Okay, great. Well, I'll see you in a couple of hours then. Okay, see you soon. All right. So we answered our phone. That, that dream was pretty interesting, right? It looked like... I don't know if that was just a generic dream where he crashed, or if he's rele reliving a particular event. Given the reference of some sort of brain damage, I would think he was in a car crash. Where did I put the tracer hmm. fluid? And so, David Munchi must be the doctor looking into whatever brain damage he has. The question is, well, what damage does he have? Food. Should buy something healthier in my way. And importantly, how is it impacting his experience with reality, which already seems to be a theme of this game. Got some pizza in the fridge, never never a bad thing. Although, we don't want those utilities to get up, so we'll close the fridge. Alright, so let's find this radio tracer fluid. Get familiar with the camera and all that. It's probably on the desk over here. What is that little guy here? We can throw an object by holding L1. Huh. Okay, didn't really want to do that, but what is this? Is that just like a doodle of a character we like? Oh, I like this little drawing on the back. Drafts number one? Something about a convention? What's this over here? Get well soon, love, mom. Oh. Aw. 
view text using R2. Oh, that's nice. Uh, but it's not going to tell us what's written on the, the front of the bed. That's what I was hoping to read, but a little difficult. Summer's coming. Summer's already here in my time. And Grimoire. Is there anything relevant there? A yellow rose. But at the same time, you can see it's like a painting of something or an image of something that's supposedly beautiful, but it has this dark undertone, right? Now, where is that tracer fluid? I would bet it's actually, was it in the fridge, maybe? Mapping Minds, Albert Isaacson. Okay. Widely praised as one of the most comprehensive yet accessible texts about the anatomy of the human brain, its function, and our perception of consciousness. But not how your brain is dependent on its body, why the brain is simply not a computer, and a multitude of other interesting facts that will make your head spin. This edition also includes two new chapters about the development of the brain and how it affects our behavior in different stages of our lives. Interesting. I don't know if that's the, the correct usage of effects there, but I can see it being used either way there. We can rotate the object with down. Can we like <laughs> look through various objects through the glass? That'd be pretty funny. Throw it. All right, so let, let's seriously look for this um, tracer fluid. It's not in the fridge. No, okay, to do. Remind Jesse, pick up meds and flowers for funeral. The funeral, oh, did, um, Jesse, Jesse must be the person we were talking to in the car. They probably passed away in the accident. And that's why he's so insistent on there never being enough time. Can I crouch? All right, where, where is this tracer fluid? Wow, there's a lot of fast food too. In one of the drawers maybe? Nope. Move the right stick while holding drawers to push and pull them. Yeah, I mean, I got that. I'm not really seeing a lot yet. Is there a message we have? Hey Simon, it's Jesse. You working this weekend or what? I knew there was something you were doing. Was it this weekend or next? Anywho, just shoot me a mail or something. Love you, Mr. Mean it. Okay. I swear that guy has the memory of a gold. <laughs> I even sent an email to remind him, didn't I? Oh, maybe we can check our computer. From David Munchie, Neurograph session on April 30th. Thank you again for participating in our research. The scan will be performed at the Pace Laboratories in Toronto, but since we are guests, our access is a bit unpredictable. I'll try to schedule a scan session for Saturday. I'll get back to you when confirmed. Sincerely, David Munchie. All right, new prescription. Dear Mr. Jarrett, I'm happy to hear your headaches have become less frequent. Your latest tests show your brain is slowly recovering, but it's still too early to tell how well it will adjust to the damage. The bleeding will continue over the coming months, at least, and you will need to come to the hospital a few times to drain the cavity to prevent the blood from building up pressure. Wow, so he, he legitimately has a little bit of a, I guess, a very subtle bleed in his brain. Since excessive stress could be fatal, I have written you a prescription for prazosin to help you with your nightmares. Please read the instructions and medicate accordingly. Try to get a lot of rest and I will see you next week. Okay. Oh, wait, no, there was one more about Saturday off. Oh, interesting. So we didn't actually send the email. Oh, I forgot to hit send. <laughs> That's rough. Hi, Jesse. Since you probably forgot, here's me reminding you that I've got that doctor's appointment tomorrow. I.e., I'm not coming into work. This means you need to make sure you're actually on time to go over to the store. And please unpack the boxes behind the counter. They're starting to become a workplace hazard. Also, books tend to sell much better if they are put on shelves where people aren't able to actually see them. That's funny. All right, so we'll actually send this email. Better late than never. Yeah, generally true. So anything in here of interest? What is this? Downtown accident kills young woman. Okay, but but it's also worth noting this is not Jesse like I potentially thought. We're gonna find out. Yesterday a driver distracted by her children ran a red light causing her to blindside a car in the intersection of Bloor Street and Spadina Road. The mother and her children traveling in a robust SUV were left bruised but largely unharmed. The other party was less likely. <laughs> or less lucky, that's how it always turns out. Isn't it? As the car crashed into the passenger side, Ashley Hall, 23, sustained devastating damages and suffocated from blood trapped in her lungs before the ambulance arrived. Her friend and driver, Simon Jarrett, 26, survived but with complicated results believed to leave him with permanent brain damage. The driver of the SUV, whose name has been released by police, claims it was an accident and practically unavoidable. Yeah, of course. Um, that's really unfortunate. Nope, not that one. Nope. Let's go in here. What is this? Summer blockbuster, cinema variety, Japanimation, bigger than ever, stunts versus CGI, massive recoil 2, flawless execution. Oh, 
This is probably intentional, right? This is uh, reflecting maybe the brain bleed of the main character here. Anything else? Is there a remote or... I don't know. A pouch of some sort? Alright, well, either way doesn't seem particularly important. In here? Some mug or thermos? Okay. <gasps> Where in the world? Is it in here? What is this? Bathroom? Ah. Eh, looks like it's been in cleaner states, but not awful. Got a hamper. Anything behind the curtains? No. Okay. Anything in the pants? Maybe in the medicine cabinet? Is that it? No, toothbrush, toothpaste, soap, razor. Alright, can we open the window? It is going to be summer, so I might want to ventilate a little bit. What is this here? Massive recoil. Oh, so we have the DVD for the first one. John Hugh is a corrupt cop working in Hong Kong. One day his life is turned upside down as he meets Amber, a mysterious foreigner who was kept prisoner by the Golden Dragon Triad. Get ready to go rogue, for it's time to go against the Triad, the police, and the supernatural forces of the underground. Get ready for massive recoil. <laughs> That's pretty fun. And then gaming console, plenty of power extension or power strips. Another pizza box. Okay, can can I walk out here? I really should drink the tracer. Where's the tracer fluid? See Dr. Can I crouch? Oh, I can jump. I can crouch. Nice. The paste. All right, that's something. It's probably like right next to my bed or something. In here, no. Any of these drawers? I don't think it's going to be that, you know, out of the ordin or like that out of left field, the location of this tracer fluid. There it is. Finally found it. To use an object you've acquired, press R2 when the item is displayed on screen. So this is called Gadutan, and doesn't look like there's anything else too interesting going on here. But, bottoms up. And I guess while we have a moment, um, I would like to say that this is blind. It feels like milk, but the taste is like It is a metal, a I think at least. But um, I will say that I probably I usually say this at the beginning of my blind playthroughs, but this is a blind playthrough, meaning I've never played this game before. Um, like I said, I had a little bit of a trial to make sure everything worked well, but I don't know how the story progresses or any of the sort. So please, 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 please do not tell me anything about what's coming up in the game. Uh, I'd really appreciate being able to experience this game as in as innocent, naive a state as possible. To Sim Jarrett. Okay. He's in Canada. Cool. Anything to note here? No? Can I open them somehow? No, I don't think so. Maybe I'm missing something. I hear there's replay ability, or like a good amount of replay value to this game. So, maybe there will be a lot more that I notice on a second playthrough. Public transportation. Time for some people watching, I guess. Jesse the Grimoire? <laughs> it's funny. Jesse. Hey, Simon. I got your email. Just wanted to wish you good luck and let you know I got you covered. Thanks. I should be able to come to the store after the scan. Don't sweat it. I got Matt and Chris help me out. Matty from SNL? Uh, guess you didn't hear He's coming in full time. Work in the comic section. That's Ashley's job. Yeah. Well, you know. Forget it. Not doing her any favors by leaving an empty spot. Not like she's coming Yikes. back. Well, good luck. Hope they find a way to reverse the whole, you know. Not a very good response. Dying thing? You're the worst support ever. <laughs> Not <laughs> that. <laughs> well, see you later, Jesse. Don't burn the place down while I'm gone. Oh, Luckily, they have a good enough relationship that that comment didn't completely screw things up. You weren't here before. What station are we trying to go to? Oh, I guess St. Patrick. I guess we're here.
Another loading screen. Lovely, lovely. Okay. Hello? Dr. Munchie? This is a little sketch. <laughs> I'd be quite concerned if this were the doctor's office I were visiting. What's up with these, like, particles in the air? Is it supposed to be, like, dust particles or something? Where is everyone? I thought this place oh. would be busy. A little bit of frame dip there, but that's alright. Can we turn on the lights, please? Thank you. It's a nice shade of yellow. Let's get some light in here, guys. Anything going on out here? Uh, nothing too interesting, at least at least at first glance. Ooh, I'm gonna snoop on the emails here. From Dr. Moonshi to somebody. Scan now. Paul, where are you? We've got a few hours. I got hold of Simon Jarrett. Let's do this. I saw your laptop in the reception. Are you already here? Call me ASAP. So Paul is missing. Hi, Paul. Talk to Pace about using the lab this week. I've managed to book the scanner for tomorrow morning and again on Friday. It's not a lot, but they said we could use the empty reception area as a kind of office. It would allow us to use their computers to run models, and also if a time slot opens up, we can get in there and use the scanner right away. I thought we could run some tests tomorrow. We could do a scan of each other to learn the equipment. It's supposed to be pretty easy. On Friday, I'm hoping Dr. Aaron Peake will send somebody over. She has a patient that was recently in a car crash. Should be interesting. David. Interesting that they would suggest doing the scan on each other, because they're not, they're not harmless. Um, but... Hmm. It seems sketch. Anyways, sent April 30th. Is that today? No, that's much earlier, right? I found some extra time in the lab today. Unfortunately, nobody told us about the code change, so I called security, talked to Professor Wei to have him vouch for our project, and finally got a hold of some honcho over at Pace's legal department that could re-grant us permission to use the lab. I'm not allowed to repeat the code in mails or texts, but I'll leave a note or something in case we forgot. So that's telling us there's going to be a note somewhere detailing the the code, right? No electricity there, I guess. Is it going to be in the drawers, maybe? Okay, so page 56. Neurographic. Neurographica. Nakajima. Um, tweak for right length. Is this important? Improved reverse projector technique? 2501? Maybe that's what I'm supposed to note here? We can't turn the page, so I guess we'll keep that in mind. 2501. See if that's the, the important note. What is this? Some sort of tile? It doesn't seem that important. Can I get the middle drawer, please? Thank you. What is this? Sinews. Trial and error. Put your scalpel away. The brain can heal itself. Whew. A lot of reading here. <laughs> the brain has an amazing transformative quality, a plasticity that allows it to comp compensate and even heal itself, explains Paul Berg, a graduate student in neuroscience at York University in Toronto. It is this quality that Berg and his colleague David Munchie, a student of computer science, are hoping to encourage. It's about getting the brain to do the right thing, and we hope to accomplish this with simple things like exercise, therapy, and light medication. But Munchie and Berg are not looking for miraculous panacea. It's about, or panacea, it's, a, it's about finding the optimal treatment for each patient. They start out recording something called a Nakajima neurograph. It's like a picture that indicates direction, says Munchi. Instead of a static brain scan, the neurograph can tell us where your brain is going. One, damaged brain scan to produce computer model. Two, numerous tests conducted on model without risk. Three, perfected treatment is then applied on patient. Huh. It's not long forecast, it's about milliseconds, but with the right computer model, Berg and Munchie can then administer all kinds of treatments without risking actual harm to the real brain. We could try giving your brain an overdose of painkillers while running a marathon, suggests Berg. It's just a computer model. We are able to fail treating you a million times over only to find the right way. And when they do find that optimal treatment, that's when they apply it to the real patient. It's still in the early stages, but their project has caught the attention from Pace Laboratories, who has promised to assist them with both equipment and workspace. We're very fortunate to get all this support, says Berg. Now we just need to get out of the limelight and actually do that work. So what's interesting is we're here for the scan, right? So that's one of the earlier steps in the process where they're going to try to figure out what's wrong with our brain before actually applying something. Can we go through? We can. Lovely. Press and hold L2 while moving to run. Uh-oh. Why am I going to be running is the question. So James was here on Monday, 
Anything in here? No, not that we can access at least. What about this? Relevant? No. Some sort of research going on here. But I guess, yeah, we're so we're one of the study subjects in that... Oh, my hello. That looks like it's where we're supposed to go. So we'll be back there in a moment. What is going on in this room? It's so dark. Classic computer screen scrolling. Image of the brain rotating. Weird science. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we'll take one of the bottles with us. Jaws? Some sort of orange drink? Maybe it's our friend here? Oh, hi. Didn't hear you come in. Simon Jarrett, right? Dr. Munchie? Well, it's uh, just Mr. Munchie, but I'm working on it. <laughs> Actually, you're helping me right now. <laughs> How confidence inspiring. Your thesis work? Yeah. It's a study I'm doing with my colleague, Paul Berg. We hope to design a gentle way to work with brain reconstruction to help people like you. Oh, did you uh, take the tracer fluid? Yes. Yes, I did. Great. Well, we can start whenever you're ready. Okay. Well, I guess I'll look around the room first and see if there's anything else we can glean from this. I'm not really seeing a lot that is going to be exceptionally useful. Can we look at the computer, maybe? No. Any of the papers here? Mm, doesn't look like we can really do a lot here. Can I look at this notebook? Nope. Please, have a seat. Don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll take a seat when I want, Mr. Moonshi. Guess we can get this scan on the road. Not any scan that I'm familiar with. <laughs> get this out of the way. You are Simon Jarrett, correct? Right. Toronto, Canada, David Munchie. Born 1988, July 16. Right. Flat neurograph, version 6. Good. All files in order. Will this hurt? It's just a scan. It'll hurt about as much as getting the picture <laughs> taken. Indians thought cameras would steal their souls. Is that so? Well, let's hope they're wrong. <laughs> Ready? Say cheese. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> what happened? Well, that's awfully dark. Hello? Mr. Excuse Mucci? me? Did something go wrong? What? This, this isn't, isn't what funny. I signed up for. Is that even the same chair? I, I'm not supposed to put myself in... Stressful situations, right? This is kind of stressing me out. Yeah, it's stressing me out too, jeez. What the hell is this place? How did I what? get here? What the heck is going on? I can figure this out. I just need to stay calm. No need to make things. What are these suits for? Are we wearing one? Wait, why? Why is there blood on the ground? It's like something broke in here and killed something. Why is it leading to the chair though? That's not very uh, reassuring. What's this? Some sort of... I don't know. All these electronics. I guess we can't open the door. Service console. Omni-tool chip installer. Build, shape, and optimize your Omni-tool with fully customized tools and assistance. Okay. So, we need to insert our Omni-tool to access it. Do I have one of those? I don't... I don't think so. It's a toolbox. All right. Um, I can move this chair. Can I maybe access something behind here now? No? All right. 
Well, then how am I going to get out of here? There's a computer automated unlock terminal from service console. Okay. So the service console is over there, right? What was that? Oh, do they want me to break the window? Maybe that's what they want me to do. I should use the fire extinguisher. That's what they always use in the movies, right? Okay. I am... I am not comfortable with this. <laughs> what is around the corner? So that's locked. Which... Doesn't inspire much confidence. Can I open it from the outside? There's a pneumatic seal. Why? So we open the door here. We got around that. Can I can I close the door? Okay, I can. <laughs> Which is good to know. <laughs> Cause for some reason, for some reason, I get the impression I may want to uh go back to the safety of a closed room at some point. So we're in the break room now. Seems safe enough, so we're gonna close the door behind us. What is this? This, like, goop. Is it oil? Or is it, like, alien blood or something? Okay. Printing. What is this? Spinach, rice, noodles. Why do they have... Can I... I wonder if I can make a meal here. Probably not. It'd be a pretty interesting Easter egg, though, wouldn't it? So we'll put that back. Um, this kind of stands out. What is this? Curry mix? Okay. Is there anything of interest in here? What is that? Is that where we are? Honestly, I get the impression we're in space. Right? Like the, the packaged food, the pneumatic seals and all that? Alright, well I didn't really find much in the break room. Just trying to keep track of where we are, make a little bit of a mental map so I don't get lost. Anything in the toilet? I think those were just flies, right? Hand soap? Gotta stay clean, right? Huh. Broken glass and stuff. Is there anybody else here? It definitely doesn't seem like it. Cali air humidifier, okay. So I guess we can head into this room. Seems to be where they want us to go. I thought this was like an arm that was gonna get me or something like that. I'm so on edge already. What happened here? This green box is suspicious. A95 worker version 3. Some sort of robot maybe. A drill. Can we use this? I don't know. It doesn't seem like we have an inventory we keep with us. What is this like static on my screen? Huh? What was that about? Oh! I was gonna say, it happens reliably or consistently when I go over that way. Is it because that thing is, like, damaging me somehow? Is that something I need to be worried about? Or is it only when I look at it? No, it's when I get close to it. What happens if I stay close to it, though? This distortion is so trippy. But it doesn't seem to be harmful. Just scary, I guess. And disorienting, to say the least. <laughs> um. Whoa. What was that? Hey, you. Can you talk? Can you talk like the others? Is this a memory we have with this robot? Why are you like this? You want some structure, Joe? Yeah, you 
do. So weird. Doesn't make any sense. Can agree with you on that one. I'm gonna shut you down now, okay? Yeah, you're creepy as hell. So I'm gonna shut you down. How did I do that? Yeah, it's almost like you tapped into the memories of someone else. What is that sound? Danger seems about right. Hello? Oh. So, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. So, there was a little bit of that static. Obviously, the music changed. Music is so telling in horror games. But, importantly, that door... That was intact when we walked in here, wasn't it? Now I can't even close it. Press and hold R1 and move like this. Oh, and move the left stick to lean. Interesting. So we're going to be looking around corners, I guess. Can I... Oh, so that was closed before too. So I guess that's where we've got to go? Presumably. Why did they tell me to... Why do they teach me how to look around corners now, though, right? It's got to be important for something. So what are we going to find here? Just kind of walking out in the open. What's over this way? Some sort of disposal, or...? I don't know. Let's see. So this is to the service station, storage, and the robot dock. I guess I can run, right? What's this here? Something I can interact with? It looks like it should be, right? Whoa. Excuse me? Moving while crouching, press circles less noisy and reduces the chance of being noticed. Wait, by what? Excuse me? So we're gonna hide in the corner for now. The lights went out and the game just told me how to crouch. Specifically in the context of it being less noisy and less likely to be noticed. What? What is out here potentially noticing me? Excuse me? What is out here? Well, things just got really tense really quickly. So we can open this. And we're gonna... Can we... Can I go in? What, what just happened? Alright. I really should have looked where I was going before going in the door. We're going to close the door there, thank you very much, and see just what is going on in here. More of that goop, right? And then one of those green terminal things. Is this, this looks like the Omni tool, okay? So our AI is Helper Jane. Oh, and we have an inventory. <laughs> okay, and we use the touchpad for that, I think, right? Can I, can I access my inventory, please? No? Uh... It seemed like it was... I had to use the touchpad to look at the inventory. Is that just it at the bottom? That's how it shows the inventory? It is, I think. So that icon shows up. Huh. Alright, so we have an Omni tool now. What is this? A little manual? The Omni tool is an advanced interface for accessing, managing, and controlling computerized systems. The onboard intelligence includes an open set of behaviors and protocols to enable the user to automate routine actions through basic logical charts. Over time, the Omni tool will automatically adapt its programs to cover subconscious behavior to optimize work and minimize user error. The Omni tool has a short range signal useful for basic or automated actions such as opening doors while performing complex operations. The Omni tool should be physically connected to a workstation or terminal. So we can kind of use these to open up certain areas but it's also something we can set the ai to like open doors as we're running through them and inevitably running away from whatever monster the game is alluding to uh to upgrade your device simply slide operators into the main or the auxiliary or auxiliary uh, slot the main slot has a standard c2-21 connector which allows the user to fit most market cortex chips into the omni tool note that introducing an additional ai will override the onboard intelligence Oh, so we can really only have one at a time. 
The auxiliary slot is a multi-connector fitting a large range of tool chip models, including but not limited to yada yada yada, a bunch of them. So the onboard AI is Helper Jane. Don't really know what that does, but I guess that's what we've got for now. Um, got some other tools and stuff. There's a little diagram of it. I'm so curious as to what's going on. What are all these sound effects? They're so unsettling. All right, well, now that we have our Omni tool, I guess we can go back to where we started, right? Because there was a service station in that area, wasn't there? That's where we came from, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Wait, what? Excuse me, is that a monster coming after me right now? Is that something I need to run from? Yes? No? Maybe? I have no idea. I guess not? Is there something behind me? No? Okay. Then I think we're kind of in the clear for now? Maybe? Can I open this? No, I guess not. So we've got to go back. Oh, we can go this path. Whew. What can we do here, though? Can we even open this right now? Swipe control. All right. Access denied? What? We mustn't... Okay, so we probably have to go back to update our AI before we can do that. Whew. Room I'm recording in is getting a little toasty. Things are a little tense, too. So I know I'm running, and that very well may be my, uh, my demise. <laughs> but I do want to speed things up a little bit. What? Excuse me? What is going on over there? What was that light movement? I tried to lean to look unsuccessfully. So that's... I think the room we came from is right in front of us, right? So let's go in here. Yes. So we successfully made it in here, alive. The window is open, but we're alive, I guess. And now I think we can update our AI. And this is probably what we need to get through that door. Service console up to three, including pilot seat activated. Okay. So I think we're gonna be able to get through that door now. However, I think, let's see, I can save and exit. Okay, I was gonna say, I think we're gonna go through that door and see whatever awaits us in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is clearly the little tutorial area, right? We're in this creepy ship, we're getting familiar with the controls, moving around, we're being told all the tactics to avoid whatever is trying to kill us in here, and how to use the different items we're gonna be putting in our inventory to our advantage as we progress through this area that we still don't know how the heck we ended up here, right? From something so benign as just, oh, you're going to get, you know, this imaging done. And all of a sudden we're transported to, to outer space. Are we even in the same timeline? Is this the future, the past? Were we just like left in this chamber for the imaging while the rest of the world collapsed around us? Probably not. This is probably all something within Simon's head. Given everything alluded to in the beginning of the game. Is something walking out there? The sound design in this game is so creepy. It really is. Can I, can I lean out here? I can, I can lean out the window. So creepy. Um, but I'm liking the game a lot so far. I hope you guys are looking forward to seeing more of what it has, or what's uh, lying ahead. Uh, for those of you, again, that know the game, please don't tell me what's coming. Just, you know, come along for the ride. And I hope you are looking forward to it just as much as I am. But until the next episode, this has been Night Zero, and this mission is complete.